Hello guys and welcome to my channel. Okay, so today I'm going to be using this cute little primary paint set. And because I'm gonna be using the primaries, I'm gonna be talking about color theory and mixing using only three colors, using only the primaries. So the paints that I'm gonna be using are from a Colorado artist and small business, TR Watercolors. They're making handmade paints at an affordable price to make them more accessible. Um, just a quick little intro about these guys that Tori is the owner and she started with her dad um, and they started making paints for herself because she's an artist and her dad works in the pharmaceutical industry so he's able to work on the formulas. And they developed some new techniques to make the batches more consistent and they also use some older techniques like mullet. Um, the paints are made with gum arabic, their own binder which actually includes honey from local Colorado bee farmers, and the natural earth pigments are sourced from a variety of different places. So it was definitely really really cool to paint with some artists from a Colorado artist and from a small business. Um, it just made me really really happy. I've been really enjoying diving into the world of handmade watercolors. They all perform so differently and in so many different ways and it's always just kind of a nice surprise to see how the paints are going to perform and I love supporting small businesses as well. So that's a little bit more about the paints that I'll be using in this video and now I'm going to go ahead and jump into the main topic what we're going to be talking about which is mixing and color theory. So there are, let's start with the absolute basics, which I'm sure some of you know, but some of you maybe don't. So let's start with the basics and that is the three primary colors. So obviously there are three primary colors on the color wheel and those colors are blue, yellow, and red. Those colors mix to three secondary colors, which are green, orange, and violet. These colors are what are called complementaries. So these colors are opposite on the color wheel. So the colors that are opposite on the color wheel and complementaries are blue and orange, orange, yellow and violet, and red and green. These complementary colors are really important for use in both creating a pleasing color composition and mixing versatile and unique colors, especially if you're only mixing with the primaries or just a small amount of paint colors. So colors also have analogous colors. So these are the colors that are going to range between the primary and the two secondaries to either side of it. So for example, the analogous colors for yellow would be orange, yellow, orange, yellow, yellow, green, and green. So that's obviously the very basics of color theory. So I wanna get a little bit deeper into mixing now. So blue is usually perceived as a cool color. We are kind of taught that it recedes into the background. It's blue, it's a cool color. Um, red and yellow are usually more warm colors. However, these colors do each have warm and cool variants and these are called the tertiaries. So there is a warm blue that's gonna have violet undertone, so blue violet. Cool blue is gonna have green undertone, so blue green. Warm yellow is gonna have orange undertones, that would be yellow orange. Cool yellow has green undertones, yellow green warm red has orange undertones so red orange and cool red has violet undertones it's important to know what these undertones and be able to recognize them because when you're mixing warm and cool tones you will create a different tone when you're mixing warm and cool versus cool and warm versus cool and cool really just depending on the colors and the undertones so when you have an understanding of that it's going to be a lot easier to mix the specific color that you're looking for so here's some examples that I'm gonna talk about. So the first one I'm gonna start with is purple. I find a lot of people have a really hard time mixing a good purple and I think a lot of that is to do with the specific colors that they might be using. So if you are going to mix a warm red with a cool blue, that's gonna create a violet that is much more muted and more gray toned. And that's because even though the red and the blue will make violet, those warm orange undertones of the warm red and the cool green undertones of the blue, those are complementary colors on the color wheel. Red orange is opposite to blue green. So they're going to kind of cancel each other out and create more of a gray tone. On the other hand, if you mix a cool red with a warm blue, you're going to get a much deeper violet tone. And that's because both cool red and warm blue have a violet undertone. Red violet and blue violet, they're analogous colors on the color wheel instead of opposites. So when you mix them, you're going to get a brighter and more rich purple. Mixing a warm red and a warm blue or a cool red and a cool blue, those are also going to create differing shades depending on the undertone of the specific paint. So as I said, when you know the exact undertones of the paint, 
it allows you a lot more control in mixing your colors. And this does apply to all colors. For example, cool yellow and cool blue are going to both have green undertones. So that's going to make the green a lot more vibrant. But if you want to create a more earthy toned green, you can mix a warm toned yellow with a cool blue to create a more desaturated and earthy tone, which is one of the things that I'm doing in this succulent at the top here. I've made more of an orange yellow and I'm mixing that more with a blue green that I've created that are more complementary colors to create more of a muted and earthy tone. So these colors are also important to remember when you're creating color harmony in your overall piece. There's multiple different combinations of colors that are good starting points to creating a well-developed work with balanced color. As you can imagine, these are based on what we've just learned. So some color schemes to keep in mind as a good starting point are monochromatic, which is all one color, complementary, which is the two colors opposite one another, so purple and yellow, Split complementary, which is actually one of my favorites. So an example of that would be violet, yellow, orange, and yellow, green. It's going to be one color plus the two colors that are adjacent to its complementary color. Then you have a double complementary, and that's going to be two pairs of complementary colors. So for example, violet and yellow and orange and blue. This is another color scheme that I quite like and work with decently often. Another great color scheme is the triad. So that's three colors that are going to be an equal distance apart. An easy example of this is the primaries or the secondaries, but you could easily do an even combination of the analogous colors as well. And then there is an analogous color scheme, which are colors that are next to each other on the color wheel, such as violet, red violet, and blue violet. And you can obviously go further than that if you want. I recommend planning out your color scheme at the beginning of the piece to create the most color harmony. Now, the last thing that I'm going to talk about here real quick is a note on mixing specific skin tones. All skin tones have an undertone to consider. When painting the base for Caucasian skin, I usually have an undertone of either yellow or pink. I always add in a slight amount of blue, usually a cool blue. This helps to dull the color to a more like less saturated level and it mimics the effects that the veins under your skin have. For darker skin, my base tone will range from pink to red to orange. I find that keeping the colors warmer helps this keep the skin lively and looking flushed. For olive skin tones, I would use more of a cool undertone, such as green, green blue, or yellow green. Make sure to consider the undertone of your skin before you begin painting, as it's going to affect how you shade the skin and the colors that you use. I usually start with a base of yellow ochre, burnt umber, and cadmium red, and then I'm going to adjust those shades to start the kind of the basic shade. So I'll add a lot more burnt umber for a deep, deeper skin tone. Then I start mixing in the undertones that are necessary, both the ones that add warmth and liveliness and those to help the color dull out and not be oversaturated. Once that base color is mixed, I use that for my mid-tones. So this isn't a base color for the entire piece. You can kind of get away with that with very light skin tones, and then you can add some more variants in color later. But especially for deeper skin tones, building it up that way is definitely not advised. Um, I would definitely use the mid-tone base color and then start dropping in a color that's going to transition between your base color and the ultimate highlight. And this color is usually going to be a little warmer and brighter because you want it to pull forward from the page. So I usually add significant amounts of yellow to the transition state stage shade <laughs> wow I can't talk and tint it depending on the overall color scheme of the piece the shadows are going to be the most versatile aspect when establishing your color scheme so shadows can range anywhere from purple or pink to very cool blues and greens and you have a lot of freedom with them so keep in mind that purple pink and warm toad shadows toned shadows are going to pull forward more than cool blue and green shadows. So I definitely think it's advisable to use both. So for example, in this piece, I used a cool blue in the bridge of the nose, but I used more warm shading on the cheek because that pulls forward and it has more blood flushed underneath to add that warmth. A good way to start to understand the varied undertones of skin is to take photos of yourself, your friends, etc., and pull the saturation and contrast of that up in a photo editing program. And this is going to allow you to see the spots of blue or purple or yellow or green in a more distinct way. And it's going to allow you to translate those undertones to your painting easier. And this theory applies to pretty much all watercolor painting, really all painting in my opinion. Varied tones are going to add more depth. 
Um, adding different undertones throughout a section of your painting instead of having the entire thing be shaded, quote, with black, as they call it, is going to add a lot more depth and realism versus if you're just adding in black and making it a darker tone. So that's kind of a quick overview of some basic color theory and mixing with just the primaries. Um, I hope this was helpful in some way to you. I know there was some basics in here, but hopefully I gave you some information that you didn't know before. And yeah, let me know if you liked this video. Um, if you liked the art, I thought it came out pretty cute. And I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, have a great rest of your day. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.